So you guys know I've been working on DTOS, which is a deployment script for my Xmonad desktop. I actually had to take a few days off from that here in the last week or so. I haven't really worked on DTOS at all because I had a family member that had a serious operation on, on their Achilles tendon. And I've been helping this family member out a lot because... They're not able to walk right now. Of course, it'll be several weeks before they're able to walk. And I've just been, been trying to help this person out. So I've taken a little bit of time off from, you know, doing things like DTOS. But today I had a little free time. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to package my Alacrity terminal config for the eventual release of DTOS. For those of you that are not familiar with Alacrity, it's my terminal emulator of choice. It's light, it's fast, it's GPU accelerated. It's got a great little config file that's rather easy to read and, and to understand. Now, one of the neat things you can do inside your Alacrity config is you can set multiple color schemes inside a single config file. So if I switch over to my desktop, this is my Alacrity config opened up in Doom Emacs. And if I do a search for uh, color schemes, all caps, I know I made a comment in my config, color schemes here. And you see schemes colon. And inside this block, everything after this block is specific color schemes I've set. And the next, the very first color scheme I've set is Doom 1. So I've got Doom 1 colon and then space ampersign doom-1 that's setting the name of the theme as doom-1 and then of course i pasted the doom1 colors inside this block here what this does it makes my alacrity terminal have the same color scheme as the default doom emacs color scheme which is called doom1 which is why i named it that and then if i scroll down here the next section is dracula colon space ampersign dracula so we're setting a new color scheme called Dracula. Of course, this is the standard Dracula color scheme. I actually copied and pasted this from the Dracula website. They had a, a sample Alacrity config file on their website, so I just did a quick copy and paste. So I have two color schemes in my config. I have the Doom 1 color scheme, and I have the Dracula color scheme. And which one do you select? Well, you select it with this line here, colors, colon, space, and then asterisk, and then the name of the theme. So if I did... Uh, instead of asterisk doom dash one, I did asterisk Dracula and I do a write on that and then open my alacrity. And you see right now, I, of course, am using the Dracula colors rather than the doom one colors. If I undo that, write that and then open my terminal again, I'm back to using the doom one color scheme. Now, because alacrity is so easy to configure with multiple color schemes, you can, you know, put a million color schemes in this one config file if you want to because it's so easy to do that people have actually already made it rather easy to do this to help you out there is an actual on the official alacrity github so this is the main alacrity github page they actually have a section called color schemes and you see they've got a list a rather long list of various color schemes and you see these arrows if you click the arrow uh, you will get the code block here. You just do a copy and paste and you can, of course, put that in your config. And now I would have the afterglow color scheme. I'm not sure what afterglow is. I think what I want to do is I want to add all the color schemes that are available in Doom Emacs. I want to also put those exact same color schemes inside Alacrity. And that way, eventually, I want to have the ability to where, you know, if I change color schemes in Alacrity or in Doom Emacs, maybe I can change both of them to the same color scheme just for consistency's sake. That's kind of the idea in my head right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few color schemes that I know are available inside Doom Emacs. I'm going to go ahead and make these color schemes available inside Alacrity as well. So I'm going to add Solarized, both Solarized Light and Solarized Dark as uh, available color schemes. So I did a copy and paste there. So what I need to do is, I'm just gonna paste it right here, but I need to make sure that we get the alignment right because by default, it is not right. Uh, if I go to the top here, remember when you're doing multiple schemes, you have the very first line as schemes, colon, and then everything else is indented over two lines. 
Well, by default, when you paste those from the Alacrity website, it assumes you're only using the one color scheme. So you see colors actually needs to be indented over two spaces. Primary needs to be indented over four spaces, etc., etc. The good thing is inside Doom Emacs or inside Vim, uh, they both work the same way. What you need to do is get inside visual mode. So the easiest thing to do would be to do control V to get into visual block mode and then go down and select all the lines that need to be indented. So that selects all the lines that we pasted. And then what you want to do is get into command mode. So if you do colon, uh, by default, you'll get this information pasted uh, automatically. You get single quote, less than sign, comma, single quote, greater than sign. That is a range. That is signifying that this is this command we run, it's going to be run on a range from the very first line we selected to the very last line we selected. And then what you want to do after that is do space. And then what you want to do is type the word norm. That's saying, hey, we want to do normal mode space, capital I. I in normal mode, capital I, is insert mode at the very beginning of the line. And then what I want you to do is space, space, because we want to add two spaces to the beginning of every line we selected. Then hit enter. If we did that correctly, every line that we selected should have been indented over two times and that is exactly what happened. Let me go ahead and actually uh, add some spacing here. So that added solarized light to our color schemes and just to verify that that worked I'm going to go ahead and try solarized dash light. And let me go ahead and write that and open a terminal and it appears we are getting an error and it says line 40 column 9. So apparently we did not type this right. Solarized light is probably not the right name. What did we actually set the name? We actually didn't set a name. So this is the problem. If I go back and look at Dracula, ah, uh, the first line should actually be the name of the theme and then ampersign name of theme. So let's go ahead and fix that. So this is good. We made this mistake. And so let's go ahead and set this as solarized dash light colon and then space ampersign solarized dash light and now that we added this line we actually need to go back and indent all those lines we indented before they need to actually be indented two more spaces so once again control V to get into visual block mode and let me select all the lines from there and then once again command mode so do colon and then uh, you've got the range from the first line we selected to the last line, space norm for normal mode, space capital I, and then space space to add two more spaces to the beginning of each line. Hit enter. And now when I write this, no more error in the terminal here, uh, although it doesn't give us the solarized light color scheme, so it's still not quite right. Let's see. Obviously, there's not an error in our Alacrity config or we would get error messages. So it does recognize there is a color scheme called solarized light and it should be using it, but it is not using uh, like this background color for solarized light is a very light color scheme and it's still using a dark color scheme here inside Alacrity. If I close the terminal and reopen it, uh, it's still, yeah, it's still not quite right for solarized light. Let me go back to the browser here and I'm going to go ahead and do a copy and paste for solarized dark and let me go ahead and add it as well and see if I can get it to work and see if I can figure out what's going on with solarized light as well. I'm going to copy that. Let's go ahead and paste this color scheme as well and remember we're going to have to actually add a line here uh, right here. We're going to have to name it so I'm going to call this solarized dash dark colon and then ampersign solar rise dash dark and then of course everything else needs to be indented over a few spaces actually these need to be indented over two spaces and then everything past this needs to be indented over four spaces so let me go ahead and do control v to get into visual block mode once again and select all the lines for this color scheme then let's type colon to get into command mode, space, norm, space, capital I, then space, 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 because we're indenting over four spaces. Hit enter, and let me make sure that all of that worked correctly. Looks like the indentation worked just fine. So now let me try solarize dash dark for a theme. 
So write that, and there's no errors, but this is definitely not the Solarize Dark theme either, so I'm not exactly sure what, what mistake I made when I was pasting these last two color schemes into the terminal here. All right, I see the problem here. In, in my original color scheme, Doom 1, I have Doom 1, and then the very next thing is setting the colors. Primary colors, cursor, selection, normal, etc. I don't have a line that says uh, colors, right? Like I did in the Dracula copy and paste. Now, this was a copy and paste. Uh, they added this line here for some reason, but I don't need that. I didn't need it in my Doom 1 uh, settings, and I don't think I needed it in my Solarize settings since that actually didn't have um, this line either, so I'm going to get rid of that line and both Solarize Light and Solarize Dark, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the extra two spaces on each line. So Visual Block Mode again, I'm going to go over two spaces, and I'm just going to go down to the end of that line, hit D for Delete, and that should take care of solarized light. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Control V, go over one space. So I'm highlighting two spaces on each line. And I'm going to go down to the end here. And then hit D. And now let me type W. And now everything works just correctly here. So uh, that was just a, an error on my part. It wasn't really an error. But because I copied the Dracula color scheme from the official Dracula website, I didn't realize they had that extra line there that really isn't present in any of the other color schemes. And I, I had added that extra line, and it was causing us a problem. So now Solarized Dark obviously works. So let's go ahead and see if Solarized Light works as well. So I'm going to do a colon W to write, and there is the solarized light theme. So now I have four color schemes. Of course, Dracula would work as well. We've already seen it working. And then, of course, my default one is going to be Doom-1. Over the next couple of days, I'm going to go ahead and work on some more color schemes to add to my Alacrity config. Those of you that or using my Alacrity config, you can go to my dot .files repository on my GitLab to grab my Alacrity config. Uh, and then, of course, what I really need to do for DTOS is actually just to package my Alacrity config. And how I do this, let me go ahead and close all of this out because I don't need it. Let me open up PCManFM, which is a graphical file manager. And I have this GitLab repository called DTOS-configs. And inside this, imagine this is a file system on your Linux machine. I have Etsy, slash Etsy, right? Inside slash Etsy, you have a directory called scale. And inside scale, that is where you should put a lot of your default config files. Uh, that's typically where... Linux distributions will put their system config files. They'll place it in slash Etsy slash scale. That way, they don't automatically throw it in your home directory and overwrite your personal configs. They put it in slash Etsy slash scale. That way, uh, you can go grab those configs if you want them, and that's the way I'm going to do it. And in dot .config, uh, I should have a folder here called Alacrity, so let's go ahead and edit. And then inside Alacrity, of course, you should have Alacrity dot yml so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and open another file manager and i'm going to go in my home directory dot config slash alacrity and there is alacrity dot yml i'm going to go ahead and drop that in there and now i'm going to go ahead and uh, i'm going to go ahead and close all of that out i'm going to open doom emacs again what i want to do is i want to go ahead and create a package build for my alacrity config so i have a, a repository here uh, called uh, dtos dash package build let me go ahead and get into that so i've got a directory called gitlab dash repos i'm going to go into dtos dash package build and x8664 these are all the packages i'm currently maintaining and let me find one that would be similar to the one I'm about to create for Alacrity. I have DTOS-Fish, which was my fish config. Let me go ahead and do the package build for it. And I'm going to go ahead and get into visual line mode. I'm going to do a quick uh, copy of this whole document here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to open up a second instance here of uh, Doom Emacs. And I'm going to go ahead and navigate back to DTOS dash package build and then x8664. And then I'm going to create a new folder here, DTOS dash alacrity slash and then a new document package build. It's going to ask, do I really want to create that? Yes, I do. And then let me go ahead and do a shift P 
shift P to paste that, uh, paste that in place. That way it does, if I just did a normal P, it pastes it, but it pastes it on the second line, right? It always starts on the next line. Capital P pastes it on the very first line where we were at. And now all I need to do for my package build here, just to, for sake of time, is I, I need to change the name from DTOS-Fish to DTOS-Alacrity will be the name of this package. I'm going to say this is the default Alacrity configuration for DTOS. It's going to grab a repository from GitLab. It's going to grab my DTOS-Configs repository because all of my configs are in that one repository. That way I don't have to maintain a million different GitLab repositories for each individual config file that I, I have installed. And let's see what else I need to change. This will provide a package called DTOS-Alacrity. And then are we going to include a install file? I will. An install file is like a post installation script that runs after uh, the package build runs. So it's actually not part of the package build itself. It's something that gets executed after, you know, the um, build and the make and the install and all of that. And then what exactly are we installing? We are installing a file inside slash etsy slash skill slash dot config slash alacrity slash alacrity dot yml let me go ahead and make this full screen i'll zoom in here so you guys can see as well oh well, let me change this as well to uh etsy skill config alacrity slash alacrity dot yml and then of course we're going to install a uh, license and the readme, and this is pretty much the same for every package. I shouldn't have to change that. And that should work. That should be a working package build. Uh, we do need this package name dot install file, which we currently don't have. So what I could do, let me do space period here inside Doom Emacs to get into the DRED file manager. And it's in the directory we're currently in. I need to create a file called DTOS dash alacrity dot install. And this is, again, it's just a, a shell script that will run after the uh, the make package command or actually after when you are installing the, uh, the pre-milt binary that we're going to build. So I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, dtos-fish.install file and copy that because, again, these packages are going to be so similar. So let me get over here. I'm going to do space period. Why is space period not working? Uh, because I'm not hitting the right key. All right. DTOS dash fish dash install. I'm just going to copy all of this and we're just going to put this here. And all of this is, this is like a, a post installation hook. And what it's going to do is because when you install DTOS dash alacrity, it's not going to place that config directly in your home directory because Pac-Man actually can't touch your home directory anyway. Even if it could, it would be dangerous to do so. You don't want to be overriding other people's configs. You, you let them take care of that themselves. So this post installation hook is going to tell you, hey, this config file was placed in slash etsy slash skill slash dot config slash alacrity in this case. And that way, uh, nobody is confused about exactly where that file was placed when they installed this package. Now let's see if this actually works. I'm going to open up a terminal here. So I need to first CD into GitLab dash repos DTOS dash config because we added my Alacrity config to this. We need to push it. So I'm going to do git add asterisk and let's do a git status to make sure what all we're adding. It looks like we've modified a few things since the last time I did a push. So I'm going to do a uh, git commit dash m for message and I'm going to say adding new configs and then let's do a git push. So now my DTOS dash configs repository which is just a, a collection of my config files that is updated. So now let's go ahead and do our package builds and, and build our repository of binaries as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cd up a directory into DTOS dash uh, package build. Do an ls uh, x8664 is the directory that contains all of the package builds for all of my uh, packages that I'm maintaining. And I have these two shell scripts, build packages and clean up. So the first one I want to run is buildpackages.sh. And this is going to take a while because 
Uh, some of these actually have to build from source. There's a couple of them that actually take a while to build from source, so probably take about 10 or 15 minutes. But it's taking every package build that I'm, I currently have in that directory, and it's actually building a binary. Let me go ahead and open a graphical file manager. I'll show you exactly what all it's building. So let's get into DTOS dash package build x86 64. Right now it's building Aura, which is a uh, package manager for Arch Linux written in Haskell. It's going to take a minute to build that. Uh, and it'll eventually build uh, dmenu, dm scripts. It's already built dm scripts, so it's already uh, run through that. And it's going to also, you know, build uh, binaries for my Alacrity configs, backgrounds, which is a collection of my wallpapers, xmonad, uh, my X wallpaper config, my build a DWM, my build a DWM blocks. It's also going to build Paru. Uh, that's another AUR helper. That one has to compile in Rust. Uh, that is... Well, another one that can take a while to build sometimes. And I've got several of these AUR packages, uh, Paru, Aura, uh, Lib, XFT, Dash, BGRA, that's an AUR package. And, and the reason I'm, I have these AUR packages that I'm maintaining myself is I don't want to have to use the AUR, especially uh, for people that use the DTOS deployment script once it's finally released. I would rather everything be in a standard repository that you can install through Pacman. Now, once this build packages scripts finishes running, you know, all of these directories are now going to have binaries in them, such as this one here. It's going to have these binaries. That's the binary package. And that is the signature that goes along with that binary package. And then I have another script that I run that actually moves all of those binaries out of the package build repository here. And it moves it to this other repository I have called DTOS-Core-Repo. It moves all of those binaries into this. So uh, once I've run all these scripts, I need to push all of this to my GitLab. We already pushed to DTOS-configs. I will then need to push to DTOS-package build because we've updated a lot of package builds from running the script. And then of course I need to update DTOS-core repo because we're going to have some updated binaries that need to be uploaded as well. I'm going to go ahead and close out this graphical file manager. We really don't need it. For, uh, I'm just going to wait for this script to finish to complete. And building the binaries from the package builds, and that, that script completed just fine. I'm going to open up a second terminal here, zoom in a little, and I'm going to go ahead and cd into gitlab-repos-dtos-core-repo this time, because now I want to move those binaries that we created in dtos-package build to dtos-core repository. If I do a ls in dtos-core repository, I have build-db, that script. I'm going to run that. It's going to take all those binaries from over here and package builds. It's going to move them over into the DTOS-Core-Repo directory. Run that. This actually should just take a couple of seconds. And let me clear the screen over here. And in DTOS-Package Build, I'm going to go back because I have this cleanup script here just to clean up anything that's not a package build. I want it to be deleted from this repository now that I've moved over the binaries to core-repo. Now let's do a git status. And uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of new package builds or updated package builds now. So let me go ahead and do a git add and git commit. And I'm going to say... Um, adding updated package builds and then a git push on that repo and then in uh, dtos-core repo I'm going to do a git status to see what has changed all the binaries have been overwritten to newer binaries updated binaries so let me go ahead and add everything in this repository as well I did a git add, and it takes a few seconds for that git add because these binaries are you know, pretty big, some of them. And then I'm going to do another git commit message, and I'm going to say, uh, let's do updating the repo database, and then let's do a git push. And now that I've updated dtos-config, dtos-package build, and dtos-core repo, these changes should be live, and I now should have an installable package called DTOS-Alacrity. And the reason I have that is because I have DTOS-Core Repo as part of my pacman.conf. If I uh, close this terminal here, and if I do a uh, sudo vim slash etsy slash pacman.conf, it's going to, of course, ask for my password. And at the bottom of my config, you see I've added DTOS-Core Repo. 
to my repositories list here. So when I do a sudo pacman dash s and do d2s dash alacrity, that should be an installable package. I may need to do a, a sync of the repositories first. Uh, let's just update the system first too. I'm going to go ahead and run this update because uh, there's several things from that repository that will now have an update available, such as my build of ST. And you guys can see one of those uh, post installation scripts for the package builds. If you were wondering what those did, you can see when uh, ST DistroTube was installed, you know, the post installation hook, the source code can be found in slash opt slash ST slash uh, dash DistroTube. So that's what the the post installation hooks are doing. And of course, with Suckless software, you know, my personal Suckless builds, it's very important to tell people where the source code is because that's how you actually configure your Suckless software. Is you have to edit the source code. So if you don't tell them where the source code is on the system, you know, people will be angry. So now that that update has completed, I'm going to go ahead and once again try to do sudo pacman dash capital S DTOS dash alacrity. And now you see. That package is available. Config files were placed in slash etc slash scale slash dot config slash alacrity. And if I wanted to, I could actually, uh, let's just read it in Vim here. I'm going to copy and paste slash etc scale dot config slash alacrity. So, uh, and of course I should have gave it the full path, but there is that config file. And then if you wanted to install this on your system, of course you would copy it from slash etsy slash skill slash dot config slash alacrity over into your home directory slash dot config slash alacrity. So that's how that would work. So again, I haven't done much with DTOS in the last week and I probably won't do too much with it in the upcoming week because I, again, I'm having to help out a family member that's had some major surgery and you know, I'm, I'm got to spend a lot of time at their house helping them out. They've got a lot of farm animals <laughs> that need uh, feeding and watering and things because this person can't walk at least for like two months. They're not able to actually be on their feet and they've got turkeys and chickens and pigs and ducks, quails, dogs and cats, <laughs> and pretty much everything from the ark. <laughs> Every animal that's possible to have, they get about uh, 40 acres of land. And it's, it's actually quite nice. It's been kind of relaxing going out there and playing with their animals. But of course, that's taken time away from all of this as well. But, you know, here in a couple of weeks, once we get past the worst of it, uh, and of course, she'll have some other family members that'll be able to help her out. And once we get to that point, you know, I'll be back to working on DTOS kind of hard. We're getting close though. We're getting real close to this thing being ready for a public release. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Epsi Gabe, James Mitchell, Paul, Scott West, Akami Allen, Chuck, Commander Angry Kurt, David Dylan Gregory, Heiko, Mike, Erion, Alexander, Peace Arch and Fedor, Polytech Raver, Red Prophet, Steven, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this episode. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to help support me, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.